Hey, what's up? It's Mark at Alchemist.camp, where we learn Elixir and Phoenix by building things. Today, we are going to continue our Ecto Basic series, and this is episode number 11, and we'll be working on change sets. I've already prepared a couple of notes that should make this a little bit smoother. There are two ways of creating a change set. We can use ecto.changeset.change or ecto.changeset.cast and we're generally going to be importing ecto.changeset in any module that works with change sets. So we can just type change or cast. For internal data, we can use change. It's a bit more straightforward and uh, it doesn't have any sort of filtering capabilities or validations. So make sure it's data that you trust and that you understand the structure of. With external data, we can use cast. Cast is uh, essentially the same thing as change, except we can do filtering and validation on it. Um, it's kind of like a type cast. You can cast whatever untrusted data is coming in from a form into data that conforms with what's allowed on your server. And unsurprisingly, we can uh, commit the change sets with repo.insert when we're creating something new repo.update when we're changing something that already exists. All right, so in our link app, one of the simpler schemas is the link itself. Uh, link has a URL and we don't really have to specify anything else. So let's start with that since it'll be our simplest example. So first we'll create a new variable and then we'll bind that to what's returned by change. First argument that it will take, in fact, the only argument that we'll pass it here is a new link. And this struct will have a URL set. This will be uh, news.ycombinator.com. So hacker news. And you can see here, we have a chain set returned. It's true or valid is true, which means everything uh, should be okay. We can just pass this into the database and we can dig into a little bit more information as well. We do cs.data. We can see the data that's going to go into the database. cs.changes. Well, there's nothing there because this is a yet to be created struct. So we can just see what's in the data and that's what's going to be in the database when we pass it into repo.insert. So repo.insert CS. And now we have a new link. We can see its ID was four. So let's get that link. We'll say HN equals repo.get link four. And we've just gotten it back out of the database. Now in order to update it, it's gonna be do new change set CS equals change HN. So last time we passed in a struct that we were building ourselves. This time we'll pass in the actual struct that's been pulled out of the database and we can pass in the changes to make to it in a map and we'll just change the URL. So the URL will now be lobster.rs, which is a very similar site, but a little bit, heavier on the tech stuff and later on the startup stuff. So now we have a change set a little bit more interesting. So cs.data, you can see we have the old data, cs.data.urls, news.ycombinator.com, and cs.changes as a new URL that will be updated when we pass it into repo.update. Uh, so it's pretty simple. We can create a change set with change and the first argument is going to be the struct that we're going to be changing. It could be a struct we build ourselves or it could be a struct that we've pulled out of the database and want to update. Then the second argument, uh, which we'd only need if it's something we're updating, will be the updates we're going to make to it. Then we can inspect it with uh, the uh, data attribute and the uh, valid Boolean, as well as the changes attribute. So we can see uh, what the status of it is, and then we can put it into the database with 
repo.insert for a new item or repo.update for an updated one. Now, casts are very similar. You notice there's one more argument here. And what that is, is that's the list of attributes that are allowed to be altered. So we'll start with a slightly simpler one. We'll just do another link. So if we were to create a link with, actually, let's do a user. Users have about information, they have email information, they have a username information. So to create this new change set, we'll use cast this time, and we'll pass it in a user struct. So this is just like we did before. And the user struct is going to have some parameters. And then finally, we'll have a list of a list of allowed attributes. Now, we'll have to define, we don't have to define these separately, but it's a little bit, a uh, little bit easier to follow. Just since we'll start with the params, the username will be Mallory. And the user's email will be uh, mlly at example.com. And the about will be uh, an avid linker. Okay, so those are our params. We can create our new change set with cast. user params and let's say we only allow the username and nothing else and you'll see we have a change set uh, it's valid even though all we've got is the username because we don't have any uh, uh, any validations on it that are requiring we have other things the only change that shows up is the username and just as before we can look at CS data it's all nil because it's new. And we just see that one little change. Now, if we also had uh, about in the change set, now our changes would change both of these things. Now we'll still get an error from the database if we try to put in a user that doesn't have uh, one of the required fields. So I'm gonna change this about to email and then we'll Put that into the database with repo.insert. The change set. And now we have another user. Let's try altering a user now. So we'll say user2 equals repo.get user2. And we can see that's Bob. And we'll make some changes for Bob. We'll say Bob's username is now going to be Rob and we'll change his about which is currently nil to uh, a voracious reader online reader okay now we can use cast to create a new change set and we'll be casting Bob that we've already pulled from the database and assigned to the variable user2, and we'll give it those params. And we'll only allow changes to username, but not about. Okay, we can see our change set data has all of Bob's existing data, notably the username, and cs.changes as our update for the username and we're not updating the about because that wasn't in our list of allowed parameters. It's very common to use this to prevent certain fields from being updated. Like, uh, for example, an email field. A lot of apps make you go through customer service to change your email address just as kind of a, a spam protection. Um, all right, so we'll put this change set into the database, repo.update CS. And now we can see that user number two is username Rob.
Okay, that's it for today. Next time I'll cover validations and constraints.